Attitudes, the right RC motor. Good afternoon, folks. Richie from Diff Domain X here. I've got two of my favourite bad boys on the side the uh, Traxxas e Reaver VXL 2.0 and the Traxxas UDR. But I want to talk a little bit about motors. I've had lots of people uh, writing to me offline and saying, Richie, what's the best motor for this car? What's the best motor for that car? Well, it's heavy thinking a lot. It would be worth doing a video on maybe how to choose the best motor for your RC car as bigger is not always better, but sometimes it is. There's a lot of factors that will play around. Okay guys, well I'll say from the outset, I'm about to throw a lot at you in this video, a lot to take on board. Hopefully I've got everything right. Uh, one thing I would say is if you do like it, you do find it useful, then please do consider subscribing. And if you like it, as ever, please give it a thumbs up. Anyway, down to business. Now you'll notice both the motors I've got in my hand are brushless motors, so when I say, how to choose the right RC car motor. Today I'm gonna to be talking in the main about brushless motors, because that's what most of the questions I've been getting out, and as it's very much the modern way to go. So first of all, I wanna talk about these two bad boys. They have got exactly the same 2200 kV motor in them. This one weighs just over five kilos, this one weighs just over six kilos. I'm going to talk about my Losi bad boy in a minute. I've got a couple of other cars which I want to introduce into the mix as well, which might explain how to choose the right or wrong motor, as the case might be. Another car I want to talk about, one that's dear to my heart as I'm building up to a serious speed run car, is my uh, Fortec VXL. This has currently got a uh, Castle Creations Mambra X setup on here, 5700 kV motor. Now this thing can do, well these two, this but supposedly can do 70 miles an hour, but not hit it with that one uh, as yet. And this can do 50 miles an hour plus on there, only about 45 miles an hour at a minute. But they've both got the same 2200 kV motor. So why is this one faster? Well obviously it's a kilo lighter. So coming up on nearly 20% lighter on there. So that is going to make a difference on there. However, this little bad boy, capable of 70 miles an hour, got 73 straight out of the box with this baby. The reason for this, it weighs less than one and a half kilos on there. So you couldn't take this 5700 kV motor and put it in one of these thinking, oh, the bigger motor is going to be faster in here because the analogy I would use is a bit like thin, a Porsche 911 turbo engine, which is fitting a Porsche 911 turbo, very lightweight car, it's taking that engine and fitting it into a three ton Rolls Royce. It's not going to work. It's never going to get in the power band due to the weight of the car it's trying to push. So even though this motor, in theory, spools up and runs faster, it only does so if the car is lighter. So you've got to think about matching the KV of the motor to the weight of the car. I'll show you a prime example of that with my Armour Granite. Okay, the Armour Granite. Now, the thing about this, I have no idea of the weight on it because the Armour website does not specify, interestingly, the weight of the Armour Granite. Uh, this is the, the brush version, the first one they brought out. If anybody at home is listening, by the way, I would love to have one of the brushless ones that, to review. Anyway, straight down to business on this. To start with, I think I fitted something like a 5200 kV motor, thinking oh, I'm gonna, this thing's absolutely going to fly on 3S, I'm going to bust 50 miles an hour, it's going to be a Traxxas Stampede VXL killer. Uh -uh, wrong. It barely went, I think, about 5 miles an hour faster than the stock brushed version did even the stop gearing. Same thing, it was just too much motor for the car. The power band completely in the wrong place. The, the, with the high KV motors, they've got like a very low amount of torque, which is very high up in the power band. So they don't really develop the power until the revs are right at the maximum. If the car weighs too much, the revs are never gonna get up there. You're never gonna reach that peak power. So you're never gonna get that 50 mile an hour capability. However, I then went and fitted one of the Traxxas Valinian 3.5 kV motors into this thing. It transformed it. The thing was like a rocket ship. I would say it was definitely a stampede, stampede killer. So that just shows a great example of the right motor for the right car. 2.5 kV, don't think you're going to be going and breaking the sound barrier because you might be going slower even than your brushed setup was in that the motor has got to match the car on there. So you do need to think carefully about the motor KVs versus the weight. Seeing that really brought home the issue to me of the high KVs do not necessarily mean 
high speed. You, the lock, I fitted a lower KV motor and I think it was like running 15, maybe 20 miles an hour faster. Now the hammer at home, even looking at Traxxas cars, as I've got on the side here, this is why I put these two bad boys uh, on the side as examples on it. 2,200 kV motor in the UDR. As I said, weighs just over six kilos, okay? It's in about 45 miles an hour, peaking out by the minute. I think I probably will get 50 with a little bit of change in the gearing. So you think if you fit a 3,500 kV motor, it's gonna go faster. Uh -uh. The can size of the motor inside this thing at 2,000 kV is about double the size of this. I'll actually take the lid off the E-Revo uh, to show you the motor size on there because it's far more accessible than the UDR one is. However, fitting in Traxxas Slash at VXL, this 3500 kV motor will crack 60 miles an hour. Why is that, Richie? Slash VXL weighs 2.4 kilos or thereabouts, so less than half the weight of this, it's got to push with the same motor. Okay, so let's have a look at the size comparison on these motors. I'm gonna get the camera off the tripod. Let's go around and have a look. Okay. Here we have got our 2200 kV motor, which is fitted in the uh, Traxxas uh, E-Revo VXL. It's also fitted to the UDR, same motor uh, on there. As I said, they're only about a kilo difference in size. This is the Traxxas 3500 kV motor, the traditional Valenium one that fits in pretty much everything in the range. So there you can see the difference in there. Volume-wise, it, it is probably about double the size on there. So have a think about that in your minds, because I just want to show you something else, right? This is a castle motor, way smaller. This is also 2,400 kV. It is a crawler edition motor, but still minuscule. So even though this has got a lower kV, you can possibly see it pushing the weight of this thing, or I very much doubt it would do. It probably would struggle in the extreme because this is designed for 110 scale, 110 scale car, and this E-Revo VXL is more like a 1 8th uh, scale or bigger to my mind. Okay, while well, I've got the camera off the tripod, just uh, switching to the uh, Fortec 2.0 VXL here. This has got the Castle 5700 kV motor in here. This motor would be a direct replacement for it, but this is 2400 kV one. It, the, this would go, this would be far slower in this car because it, it's not gaining the revs that the 5700 kV one is. But this would be able to turn a far bigger pinion gear and a far smaller spur so you could potentially get close to the speed um, with this because it's got more torque so it, may, it was more likely that this thing would push it and accelerate it far quicker than this would do because this has got all the power and the torque low down this has got it all high up in the rev range now I want to do a few more speed runs with this before deciding whether this is actually the right motor for this car because a couple of people have said Rich I think that might be virtually too much maybe you drop, drop down a few kvs on it maybe down to like 4400 4800 something like that and try that out so I might try a lower kv motor in it with more torque and up the gearing and see how we get on and see if I can actually get the motor in the power band and get that top speed because this has got up to about 83 miles an hour uh, so far but doesn't seem to want to get much more beyond that but without a hugely longer runoff, uh, without a hugely longer area uh, to run the thing in, which I'm struggling with, but that is down to me. Well guys, I'm hoping all this information on the motors is giving you some guidance on what you need to do when selecting your next motor. Uh, if it is, and you're not a subscriber already, then please do consider subscribing. Anyway, next, I'm onto the big bad boy, low seat, which I've got tucked away just down here. So I'm gonna the camera back off the tripod, wait till you see the motor on this thing. Mind you, it's only going to be really slow, just 800 kV. This is going to be a prime example of where a bigger kV motor is not always faster. So 45 miles an hour, peak speed, I've got out of this so far with a 2200 kV motor, of which you've just seen the size of in the Revo. Down here though, I've got this low C. Now the low C weighs just over 12 kilos. That's double the weight of the uh, Traxxas UDR. But it's only got an 800 kV motor, but that motor pushes it to over 50 miles an hour. So how can that be, Rich? Because that is the motor. Give you some idea, that of the size of the thing, that is my hand. I'll pick up one of those motors to show you a better comparison. Okay, the all-powerful Traxxas Valinian motor. Just checking that out on the size there. 
it is less than, I would say, half the diameter and less than half of the length of this 800k V motor on here. This m lowly 800k V motor, which you might think that's a really low wire which is not going to give the speed, will push the, uh, the low C, all 12.1 kilos of it, to over 50 miles an hour, which is faster than a car, which is less than half its weight with a higher KV motor. So that is my sort of fine, one of my final points in hammering home, that high KVs don't necessarily equal high speed. It's all about pairing the right motor with the right car. Well, I've given you a lot of information that's useful to you guys and girls out there today. A uh, lot to take on board, and I was trying to get it in the right order, so hopefully I've managed to get across what you need to be thinking of when going about how to choose the right motor for your RC car. Uh, it just shows that high KVs is not always better, as was the case with the Armour Gramet, which I showed you over there. Uh, I dropped the case of KVs down by like 2,000 KVs, and that thing just like sat on fire. It was like a rocket ship. And so with this, even there with this, I'm thinking of dropping down maybe 1,000 KVs on it, just to see if you get any difference on the speed on it. Might be a little longer runoff area for this one, but we shall see. And this prime example of a Traxxas 3,500 KV motor just shows that if you put it in one of these cars, it would go far, far slower than the 2,200 kV motor in either one of these two bad boys to either side of me. Well, any more questions any of the guys that you've got on how to choose the right RC car motor, please do far away. I'd love to hear your opinion. If I've missed any points, anything of blinding errors, uh, please do shout out. I feel I've learned a lot in the past few months alone uh, about choosing the right motor uh, for my cars, and I wanted to sort of pass on some of that information. I was getting a lot of questions. Uh, about it, which I'm quite happy to answer, but I felt this video uh, might give people a bit of guidance when seeking the, uh, uh, the next thing. Likewise, you are not going to be able to fit the lossy 800 kV motor in this car. You would probably double its weight. On that thought, guys, I'm going to call it a night. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please do consider subscribing. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please click on the circle image to subscribe. And if you hit subscribe, then don't forget to hit that little notifications bell next to